Good afternoon to you. Mark out of HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for Sunday, September 29th, 2019. We have today and tomorrow, and that is it for September. We will roll into October with a busy tropics, it does look like. So let's take a look at what's happening out there. A few systems to keep track of here across the globe. In the eastern Pacific, we have a tropical storm, uh, Narda. And then we have Lorenzo, which became a Category 5 yesterday evening. And then we have over here a typhoon now in the western Pacific. Uh, they have had a very down year in that area. Nothing of significance since, believe it or not, I think it's been February. A while back, in the wintertime, no less. And so not much activity there. Typhoon Metag there. Going to head up towards um, the... <laughs> Pretty close to Taiwan, maybe making landfall in eastern China and then cutting across up towards the Korean Peninsula. We will keep an eye on this over the coming days. Tomorrow, we will check in and see what James Reynolds is doing. He chases those things out there from Japan, his home base in Japan now. So it's much easier for him, obviously, to get after those West Pacific typhoons. All right, the loop here in the Atlantic uh, from the Tropical Tidbit site. Uh, very, very large hurricane, Lorenzo, the only system worth talking about in the Atlantic right now. Uh, here is Narda over in the eastern Pacific, the main development region out here, pretty void of any significant development anytime soon. Uh, but this big, powerful hurricane has generated swells that are going to emanate out from the system all across the Atlantic Basin here over the coming days. Those will reach the Western Basin. They're already starting to do so, um, picking them up down here in the Virgin Islands. Bermuda, the east coast of the U.S., uh, all the way back up to the North Atlantic. Huge waves. Some of these waves out close to the system uh, are going to be in excess of 50 feet. So a giant wave maker. Uh, the Azores are going to start feeling that, if not already and the Canary Islands over here. Just a giant machine in the Atlantic Basin here, turning up the ocean. It'll be very interesting to see what the cold water wake looks like as uh, we get new sea surface temperature anomaly data over the next week or so, really removing a lot of that heat content out of the Atlantic Basin there, the main development region and the areas just north of there, actually up in the subtropics. Uh, I guess. I mean, I don't know what you define the subtropics. Is that you think I would know that? Is it north of 30 degrees latitude, or is it north of 20? I don't know. But it reached category five north of 20. You know, it's actually north of about 24 degrees latitude where it became a cat five. And of course, Dorian did the same thing uh, north of. It actually, it was north of 25 latitude that Lorenzo did it. So, we haven't had any Cat 5s way down here in the deep tropics. The other one last year, Michael, uh, also close to 29, 30 degrees latitude. Pretty amazing. Anyway, that's a story we can talk about another day, perhaps. And in terms of what that means, the significance of it, we'll see. That makes six Cat 5s in the last, what, four years, right? Something like that? Yee, so some kind of a trend there, something to pay attention to. All right, another thing to pay attention to, what's going to happen with Lorenzo? We're going to discuss Lorenzo, which of course is right here, and we're going to discuss this area through here because it's starting to get my attention in terms of maybe something trying to develop this week coming up, not way out in the future. We're going to be watching that too, but something may be trying to brew this week. So this is the GFS, all right? So this is the GFS at 850 millibars, a certain layer of the atmosphere where we can see uh, easily this blob of energy here that is Lorenzo. So keep your eyes on that. If we move out in time, you uh, see what happens here. I'll just use the little button here, the next image. Actually, I'll use the arrow keys on the keyboard. And we go out to 48 hours, and then 72 hours, it passes the Azores, and then look what happens here. It gets captured by this larger storm system 
to the south of Greenland right there. And so, at the 72-hour time frame and beyond, and beyond, it gets uh, pulled into that storm system. A little piece of it goes across Ireland, maybe. Um, and, and the whole storm system just rotates around, clearly, uh, up there in the North Atlantic. And then other systems come across that have nothing to do with Lorenzo. Just more storminess. Big time. Big time storminess up here in the North Atlantic. Are you kidding me? I mean... The wave generation from all of this storminess is going to be incredible. So the sword boat fleet that comes out of Gloucester and elsewhere, and those that come out of Maritime Canada, wow. You know, the North Atlantic fishing fleet is going to be really having to battle some incredible storminess over the next several days. You know, Lorenzo is part of that mix. I mean, just look at that. I mean, if you could get the scale and understand how many thousands of miles of ocean is going to be agitated by this enormous stormy pattern uh, in the North Atlantic. I mean, that is absolutely incredible. So anyway, for interest in Ireland and the UK, GFS says, nope, not happening. All right, so that's interesting. So there's the GFS. How about the counterpart, the Euro? Now, the euro only gives us 24-hour increments here on the publicly available data that Levi Cowan has coded into this remarkable feature that we call tropicaltidbits.com. So here's the initial. You see where Lorenzo is. Let's point it out for you just to make sure. There's Lorenzo, all right? And over here is uh, the UK and Ireland. We'll just keep that uh, squared off for you, all right? So 24 hours out. 4872 passing the Azores, very similar to what the GFS has. Let's just go back to the GFS and bump that up to 72 hours. So the GFS is a little faster than the Euro. You can see that there's GFS, there's Euro, and um, that's day uh, three on the Euro. Here's day four on the Euro. And if we go out to 96 hours on the GFS, I mean, there's a huge difference there. GFS, Euro. So the Euro there at day four, then finally day five, it goes in there to the south of France, whereas the GFS at 120 hours, it's all part of this huge, aggregated, massive storm of epic proportions. It really is. I mean, the isobars that you see in there, holy smokes, the wind and the rain. You know, I should go to Greenland and get out there on the coast of Greenland Howling easterly winds just piling up massive waves against Greenland over here. Can you imagine? I'm not kidding, man. This is like the day after tomorrow size storminess. <laughs> I'm not joking in the modeling here. Thousands and thousands of miles that the wind will be blowing across the ocean. That fetch is incredible. And even on the European, you know, it's no... Uh, even though the Euro has uh, Lorenzo south uh, of the UK and south of France there, Euro still has its own giant storm. I mean, incredible. So we have to watch this very closely for obvious reasons, and I'll zero in on this more even tomorrow. Now, the other thing that catches my eye, let's zoom into a different part, uh, part of the, the basin here, uh, this is the Western Atlantic, and this is the analysis from today. And look at this little do doohickey in here, north of Puerto Rico. This energy here, uh, you got the outline of this big ridge and some leftover energy from Karen and other whatever, who knows, uh, in the southwest Atlantic. Now, this is the initial map, and this is what we have 24 hours out. Notice in 24 hours... Uh, a little bit of wave energy, tropical wave energy here to the west of Jamaica. So maybe finally some rainfall for Jamaica. I know you guys need it down there. So that's 24 hours out. Uh, and then finally at 48 hours out, you know, it's not that amplified, but you can clearly see the counterclockwise rotation and the energy. And this would show up as cloudiness and showers and storms. Uh, over the Caymans, etc. 
And I would suspect that tomorrow or certainly by Tuesday that the National Hurricane Center will outline this in yellow. It's yellow here in the vorticity signature and give it some kind of a percentage. And considering how bad the models have been this year, with the exception of Lorenzo, uh, that's 48 hours. Let's go to 72. It's even more marked. You know, you can see it's it's a little bit more energy. And you say, well, man, that people that know this, you could look at this and you could make the argument, dude, you're getting all excited over nothing. That's true. It does look like very anemic, you know, like innocuous cloudiness and showers. There is some counterclockwise rotation in there. Those wind barbs are nothing, five, ten knots at best. You know, no big deal. But the models really screwed the pooch on Karen in their backyard. The models, the global models backyard. All the upper air data that's around the model should have done a better job with Karen and er, Karen, Amelda. Slow down, Mark. Amelda, Amelda. I wish I could go back and edit that. It's Imelda. And they screwed the pooch on Karen, too, thinking that Karen would be this strong hurricane coming into Florida about now. So I'm technically right about saying that they screwed the pooch on Karen, but that was temporary. Then they got it right and whatever. So uh, Imelda. They didn't see Imelda. Uh, as it came into the upper Texas coast here. And so when I see this, and it's been a little more significant on each run of the Euro these last couple of days, I start to wonder, you know, is something going to try to pop? And then you see there's also another system maybe trying to develop well north of the islands here in the southwest Atlantic. We'll keep an eye on that. Um, that's 72 hours. Here's 96 you know, this gets a little bit more energized. Uh, this gets a little bit more energized. So could we have Melissa and Nestor, right? Maybe M here. Those are the next two names and N here. Possibly. Uh, considering the track record of the models this year, I wouldn't be surprised. Finally, at day five, you know, this tries to kind of close off in here in the southern gulf. Don't know what to make of this out near Bermuda. Uh, I think this is still the leftovers of Karen, believe it or not. Some remnant bones or soul of Karen, whatever you want to call it. Um, so that's day five. And then finally at day six and day seven, day eight, front comes in and snags whatever it is. And that could be, when you see all that energy right there, lots of rain. So, huh, you know, what do we do? You know, the Gulf there, the Caribbean, something tries to move out of that region. And you got this uh, approaching frontal system to kind of scoop this up. We got to watch this. I mean, I go back, I look at a Melda, and I think, yeah, they really, they really messed that up. And to add to it, you know, arguing that something could develop, the Madden-Julian Oscillation stuck in phase one for the next two weeks, now going out to October 13th. There it is, still stuck in phase one. That favors the Western Hemisphere and Africa, generally speaking. So, hey, we, you know, this could be a very busy week coming up. We got Lorenzo to keep an eye on. Maybe something developing in the Northwest Caribbean into the Gulf of Mexico. The ghost of Karen. Oh, wow. All this kind of stuff. So, I'll be on top of it and we'll see what happens. There you go. I didn't think it would be this interesting of a conversation today, but apparently it is. All right, also tomorrow I'm going to do a separate video outlining my 12-month vision going forward uh, with Patreon and what we're doing with our crowdfunding and all the things that that's going to enable us to do in the future. That'll be a separate video that I produce tomorrow at some point. I'll post that on Patreon first, and then we'll make that publicly available for everybody else some really exciting things coming, but I'm also going to reflect on the incredible advances that we made just this year alone because of our support from our patrons from Patreon. An amazing uh, slew of things coming up, but what we have done this year too, absolutely incredible. So I'll be publishing that tomorrow in addition to the Monday 
September 30th edition of the old Hurricane Outlook and Discussion. All right. I'm going to sign off and take my kids to the beach. It's 92 degrees here in Wilmington, North Carolina. Surf temperature about 81. Yes, my kind of weather. I'm out of here. Have a great rest of your Sunday afternoon, wherever you may be. I appreciate you watching from whatever device you might be watching and listening from. I am Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com. Thanks for watching. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.